and beer. Today, my guest is Tony Campanovo from Texarkana, Texas. Tony, welcome. Good to be here. Tony is a Line 6 product specialist, part of the Yamaha Guitar Group. That's correct, yeah. That is a lot to remember, but I've done it, and we'll move forward now. Uh, so, Tony, you brought some toys today. Um, I did. We'll get to all that stuff. But So you've been doing Line 6 now for what, six or um, seven years even? Has uh, it been that long? I've started to forget myself. Um, I, think I feel like you is, started that. This is the sixth year. Okay. It was soon after I moved that you started, I think. Probably so. so because 2015, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I moved here in 2014. Yeah. So. Oh, wow. Gosh. Yeah, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, psh, yeah. Uh, we got Lyndon McCarty twisting and What's tweaking. Up? Lyndon McCarty on guitarty. <laughs> um, cool. So... Gear and beer, full effect. Yeah. Third episode. Awesome. Appreciate you making the drive and hanging out. I drove all the way from Texarkana, Texas. Man. It's like a seven hour drive. That's a pretty long drive. Yeah. I've made it recently. I kept on going, I, thankfully. Well, but that's the best thing to do when you get to Texarkana. I totally agree. I totally agree with you there. <laughs> um, so you, we were kind of talking before the, before we started here, you, you were saying that your your job like <clears throat> description kind of changed recently mm -hmm. uh do you care to mm -hmm. elaborate on that any sure i guess to to fully understand that i'd have to explain what my job description was okay let's start there so basically uh i was hired on you know a few years ago as you yeah. know um by line six yeah. oh yeah <laughs> line six hired me just as they were basically becoming acquired by Yamaha. Mm. Uh, oh, so you were there just right before the switch? Well, over? it was kind of all happening at the same time. Oh, okay. Um, so, you know, but I didn't understand it. You know, I never had a real job in my life. I played guitar for a living. That's hard work, but I don't know if it's a real job. Which which part? Playing guitar for a living. Well, it's hard work, and yeah. but people don't consider it a real job. We know that it, we work hard. Anybody that's that. done it knows. Right. Um, yeah, that's probably the only kind of people that are going to watch this anyway. I mean, maybe your mom, my mom. Yeah, they don't think it's hard work at all. They don't. They know. didn't want us to do it. Well, here we are. But yeah, so. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> uh, so I was hired on as a product specialist. I didn't know anything about the products, so it was hard to specialize in products that you don't know anything about. Uh, I was just a working guitar player. And uh, not really much of a gear head at all. You know, I was never a gear snob. Yes. So you've always known yes. way more about gear. Yeah. Tell me more. You're, you're being funny, but yeah. Um, so I had to learn about all this stuff. And then, um, you know, my job kind of... Well, you, you were playing a boogie, right? I had a little, well... Did you I have had a Lone a, Star? No, you didn't have a Lone Star. You I have a Lone the, Star now, but I had, at the time I had a little Mesa boogie... Uh, I don't even remember what that model is now. Like a 35-watt Johnny? Uh, was or it, the 50 it was watts? Probably something like that, 35. That amp actually belonged to my father. And he oh, that's repossessed right. it not long after. Um, uh, I'm going to need you to bring that on Yeah, back. he wanted to, he, he thought it would do it would suit him better being in the closet at home rather than his son who worked played guitar for a living using it on stage. Well, you would probably screwed it up. No, I got I, I had it retubed. I I put armor all on it, cleaned it. I bought a cover for it. I put I bought a foot switch for it. Oh. That amp was I used to run that in stereo with the Fender Deluxe that I still have. What a beautiful sound that was, especially with some what was there was a, I had some kind of like stereo. I hear dudes make deluxes sound good fairly often it's hard to I, make them sound bad i can't make it sound i can't make any new ones i've i've heard older ones that i liked but like the new like the, any other blackface reissued deluxes i just I can't i can't get what i'm looking for out of it well mine's a reissue it's probably because i suck but i i like i anytime i've had like backline it's always either deluxe or like a uh, deville dude I, if i see a big a backline if i see a deluxe in the backline i that's a sigh of relief. A lot of people me. feel that way, but I just, that's, you know, uh, I, mean, I've, I have two blackface circuits sitting right there, but they're, 
they're they just they're different because they're they're point to point. They're not PCB, so it just feels different. Yeah, I, was probably, just, I don't know what that's like. I was having a uh, I don't know if it was a full blown argument, but on the phone today with Wes Stevenson about Who? Uh, I never I don't think I <laughs> yeah. know who that is. Is yeah. she the tuba player? Yeah, yeah, she's really nice. Um, <laughs> but uh, it, to to me the again, I can't play guitar real good, and I especially suck if I can't if it doesn't feel. Uh, I'm not gonna. I don't, don't want to listen to this trash. I can't play guitar so good. You're a great guitarist. I'm not gonna listen to you rag on yourself. Uh, okay, let's. Well, I'll we shut can this, move. this. We can stop this whole thing. Shut right this now. thing down. Cut it off. Get these guys out of here. It's just us. We, <laughs> we, we, we. Security! <laughs> security! What is happening? Aaron, security. Security, we need a beer! <laughs> uh, you were making a good point, and then... I... No, so, it, to, to me, it's a it's like a feel. It's a, it's a response thing. You're still talking about the deluxe. Yeah, I'm talking. Yeah, the, the, specifically the reissued deluxes, which is what you. you I don't have a show reissue. Them. Okay, well, and a lot of people do. And it's I the hear, silver face, though. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know that I've even played a. Uh, I played a real silver. I mean, it's face, like a bare and bones. I, and like, it sounds like an ice pick to me. No, I have no, that, that's the way the twin guitars. sounds to me. Well, see, I agree with that too. But those are the big, the big Watt silver face twins sound real ice picky to me. It sounds great for something like steel or. You know, if you need a really clean sound that's way louder than ever necessary anymore. Well, okay. Um, now that we and we talked about this with Boo Massey in the first episode, it's it, the big <clears throat> guitar rig sound used to be everything. Now everybody's getting giant sounds out of Champs and Princetons and, and digital boxes and AC fours mm-hmm. and six watt. Uh, Whatever Tony's playing, Tony Pierce is playing, uh, VHT, a six watt VHT. Nope. That's what boods are doing, man. I think I just said boods. That's <laughs> what boods are doing, man. Well, I had an interesting experience um, <laughs> a few weeks ago at a jam session. Were there any like boods open, there? There were. A, it was nothing but boods. <laughs> As a matter of fact. It was all I, there. I, I believe you. Uh, <coughs> whoa. Uh, well, whoa. I, I played through a, a real, uh, like, a little Vox, you know, like AC30, I guess it was. 30 or 15? Uh, Well, I don't remember. Okay. It was dark. It was my first time playing through one, and I was just there to try to make a good impression. But, Which I'm sure you did. Well... You're a I, bit I, of a guitar wizard. It, 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 if it the wasn't, hair wasn't a giveaway, let me tell you something. This this I'm amp you now. had no effects. It had nothing. It was really dry. They're called those amps. Yeah, uh, I had a Strat. This doesn't know. have any effects. That's just an amp. Well, okay, it was this. This doesn't it, have any know. effects. It's just the amp. That these have reverb. This, That's an effect. this thing didn't. I think I don't. This thing had reverb, which is the only thing that saved me because I, I got to have something. Everybody, and I, I, I tend to want to have something too, but when I play in the matchless, I just don't have, I don't even have a verb on my board. I've never had a reverb on that amp and I just use delay. I usually just like a little slap back to give me a little, a little wetness, if you will. Yeah. That, that amp is ridiculous though. It it's great. Gives, amp. It, it hurts my ears. Well, it, it can do that. Uh, it sounds great to me. I I miss playing it. There are times when I'm playing, um, and I've been playing. I've got I, I used I didn't have it up here the last episode either, but I have Boo Massey's uh, Third Power Woolly Coats. Have you ever seen one of those? It's like yeah. a. It's kind of like a. It's like the size of a Princeton. It's basically a Princeton, and I've been playing that, and it sounds pretty those are good. Cool amps too. They are cool, man. I I you know. I've never played small amps. I always had to be way louder than was necessary. Well, my point was, I played this Vox, and I've never really played through a Vox other than the virtual... What was your point, though? The point was, there's no reason. Anyway, uh, my (laughs) point... You said it yourself. She kidnapped herself. Uh, My point was that this was just my first time really playing a Vox... 
and it was, you know, like it wasn't mine. And I, all I had was my strat, you know, and I was using like one of those out of phase positions. And uh, the, yeah, uh, a strat or did you, not this guitar? No, it was a strat. Oh, okay. <sighs> I, I, I don't, made by some other brand I've never, I'm not familiar with, but yeah, it's like a bender. bender yeah, strat, I think bender is right. Yeah. Anyway, um, the tone was so great and it sounded so good all night. And I was like, why do you think that was? It, I just think it was new to me really playing through a Vox. Now I've played through Matchless, which is a Vox on steroids. Yeah, it's uh, it's like it's like a upper in my opinion, but this it's was like a, an upper mid characteristic to the amp that makes well, it gives it a sweetness and it you you can find it in the mix. It's the class A the uh, the the class A architecture the of, old power the, of bleed. the amp. Yes, it just makes it there's something about a class A amp, you know, because it doesn't go into a resting point. <laughs> Like a like an A B amp would, yeah. that it doesn't have that darkness that I normally like. Charlie Murphy, yes, Charlie Murphy. Uh, darkness. Uh, <laughs> I had, you know, Sorry, I had you a mentioned point. Dave Chappelle earlier. It's you know what? I'm, but you know what I'm saying. It's yeah, it's totally. uh, you can hear. It's like I, I feel like I can hear the wood grain of my guitar through a Class A amp, whether it's a Matchless or a Vox or or whatever. Yeah. Or even a freaking impulse response, you know. I feel like there's that, you know. We refer to it at at uh, in my in my job as sparkle or chime. Yeah. You know, and um, it's it's really interesting, and uh, I've noticed that it, the sound, you know, a lot of the some of the newer progressive stuff that you're hearing nowadays. The, the amp sounds kind of have a little more of a class A sound, but I, I, it was just... It's hard. It's a hard sound to emulate. All of the emulators that say they're supposed to be British, like like Voxy or, or Matchlessy or, you know, Bad Cat or whatever they're, mm. uh, they're you know, the Mad Cat or, or the Matched or, you know, whatever mm. generic name they come up with. Mm -hmm, mm. It, it doesn't, it doesn't ever have that characteristic, like... I want it to. I, it, that's not the same these days, uh, as you know. I, I don't. I don't have. I don't have any any of the, the heavy well, processes. If you're, if you're making a. If you're if you're if you're drawing a distinction between these days and prior, which I would say what beyond ten years ago. Uh, no, no, but uh, well, I would go. I would venture to say that more than ten years ago, it all sounded like. Sure, the, the beginning of the technology it was when I. First started dabbling. Maybe more than ten years, we, but you know. we've been pros for pros, uh, as in by pros I mean broke. And, I get paid to stop. Yeah, a lot. So I I, I get paid by the note. So um, I well, that's play a lot of them. I can tell. Yeah, you know, uh, you no everyone can, <laughs> everyone can tell. Um, but they do sound better these days. Uh, Rob, Rob Music, our friend, uses one live, but he runs it into uh, this weird Seymour, digital Seymour Duncan mm -hmm. amp. It's mm -hmm. like a pedal I think size. It's a power amp, right? Yeah, it's, it's a, like a, it's like a, it's like one of those quilter, one of those quilter power amps. Or whatever. Yeah, that thing sounds great too. By the way, just the, his rig. It does. It it sounds fantastic. It sounds as good as I've heard that kind of a thing sound. Now, I haven't. Are these ever... complimentary? The drinks? Uh, no. Yeah, we'll bill you. We'll add it to your tab. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, you I have to pay better... your tab when you get your parking validated. I better rein it in then. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's a backup over there. Yeah. I, well, if I'm paying for it, maybe I should just leave it. No, Lyndon got you on that one. <laughs> I, if I, I could pay you by notes, with notes. Okay, play some notes. Uh, so you, we got, you want to hear some notes on yeah, some of so these gadgets? Yeah, so you brought this HX Stomp XL made by Line 6 of Yamaha Guitar Group. And uh, we li you literally just pulled it out of the box. I literally, yeah. You um, dialed in a sound. Yep. Do yep. some sweet picking. Let's hear it. Well, <laughs> that's... Uh, I'd Specifically <laughs> sweet picking, That's please. easier said than done. Come on, Frank Gambale. I want to hear it. <laughs> that's easier said than done. Uh, maybe before that... Um, Maybe, maybe we'll warm up on some pentatonics. How about that? Uh, the um, pentatonics, the acapella group from the colony or right. wherever they're yeah. from. <laughs> so uh, I do have here with me today. I brought a couple of things, to, uh, uh, and as Robert pointed out, and I guess we'll just start with the first one here. That's 
that we have a, a shot of here. And yes, this is the HX Stomp XL uh, made by um, Line 6. Of Yamaha Guitar Group. Part of Yamaha Guitar Group. So Maybe uh, you've heard of them? I, I, well, I, You're probably thinking to yourself, is that the Yamaha Guitar Group that I've never heard of? And in this case, yes. It is exactly all those things. That's what I have. I'd never heard of them until they created it and then put me in there. It's like, um, well, you know, it's it's like they told Rambo, you know, we didn't make you what you are. <laughs> you know, we just is that what they told them? You're you're basically like a sculpture, and the sculpture was always there. The sculptor just chiseled away the rock around it. But it was always there. So I guess in a sad way, that's how that's me saying that I was always part of Yamaha Guitar Group, even before it even existed. But you're so you're kind of like a founding member. That's what you're saying. <laughs> is your name Tony Yamaha? <laughs> His middle name is Yamaha. Are you really a Japanese motorcycle man? I'm Tony Line, the seventh. You uh, may have heard of my dad. Line Tony six. Line, yes, and he's very powerful. That's very, the, that is not. <laughs> you know, we, let's disclaim that when. Yeah, I'll edit that out. Don't I worry. am not. I am not related to anyone uh, of any significance uh, affiliated with Line Six or Yamaha. I'll, however, they do you employ will, me. I don't know that that's true. As of today, as of I, today, not after I, this comes out. I think I could make uh, a philosophical argument that you are related to yourself, and you are of well, Line Six fame. I am of Line 6 fame. For whatever that's worth. For six years. It ain't nothing. I mean, you know, the people at How the office. How many other people do your job? The people there's at the some, office I know, there know are me. Some. Yeah. Well, I, I, but there's not a lot of now you. Now, that's an interesting question. You want to get real? Okay. As of today, there are only two people that do my job, including me. Me and one other guy. Is it? You ever heard of the Seattle Seven? Well, that was I've me. heard of the Seattle Seahawks. That was me <laughs> and, and six other guys. Okay, I don't. Your references are out of control. Wow, I didn't re- really? I didn't recognize that. Wow, I'm sorry. that's sad. Go watch Big Lebowski again. How about go I, go back and I watch? Mean, that. I can go downstairs. You ever heard and of it? Do that. We just turn the kill this and yeah, go watch cut, it. Cut it. We're gonna go watch. <laughs> no. So uh, yeah, there are there there were three. I, I got to text the bartender. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, can I keep talking? Yes, yes. please. Oh, Real okay. professional. Oh, please. Okay. Uh, there were three of us when I got hired. The, you know, two guys. They hired me, and about a year at, into that, they hired one other guy. So we were complete. We had a guy for Southeast, East Coast, Midwest, West Coast. That's how they, they and they divided us all up in the same way that Guitar Center divides up their regions. Uh, they decided that was a good pattern for for what you know whatever. Because at the time, Guitar Center was dominating. Music retail. Well, I'm well, not even going to say they were dominating, but, but they were not, a strong uh, factor. It, I don't know that it's still true, but it, the consumer can't directly buy anything. You can't get any hardly any parts or any support from Line Six. You have to do it through a, a third party, right? Uh, for the most part. Now you can call Line Six customer support. Have you ever tried doing that? Uh it's been so long, I don't remember. I, well, you would think that you you wouldn't do that because you know me, but I've not been much help in that area. But I don't okay. necessarily work for customer service either. Uh, customer service, Tony. I mean, you know, sometimes I serve customers. but Like you got served like a dance battle? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This I got to see. You know that guy in Guitar Center that's doing the sweep arpeggios when you're in there trying to look at a guitar that's that you, you might want? Yeah, that's me playing through like that 1,000-watt solid-state oh, tweeter. Yeah. That's me. Crate blue voodoo's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you got served. Hey, I had one of those. I did too. <laughs> My cousin had one. Got of the those. mirror in the back and then the tubes yeah, all lit yeah. up. Orange. It was a cool looking amp. They said it was the working man's uh, Marshall or something at the time. Uh, yeah, it was definitely a affordable and it sounded. It Marty Friedman sounded played one for, for like a photo shoot anyway. It Man, sounded, the clean on that on that amp sounded fantastic. I didn't use that much. 120 watts of all tube power. Did you have the blue one or did you have the I had, black? I had that navy, dark navy blue one. I see. Yeah. I had that too, but uh, the other guitar player in the band at the time had the 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 second edition, the black one. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, the and black. It, it sounded better, and they mm-hmm. had a hundred watt 
or they had a hundred. Maybe it was 50, 100, 300. Or maybe it was 100, 200, 300. Mine was 120. Options. The original was 120. Yeah, mine was 122, yeah, yeah. but they went to the three way Johnny. I had a PV 100. Anyway, you still didn't play any of these notes, and I've asked you to play some notes. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, I'll just play some notes. I, play some dang notes, man. You know, so we're, right. go, we're going through Stomp, uh, the Line 6 HX Stomp XL, and I just kind of threw this together. Uh, before I before get some good I, light noise going, yeah, let me get. No, I'm gonna turn this. Uh, oh, the input gate is on, so we've got a little noise here. But you know, I'm yeah, on there's... the I'm on single coil setting. Let me uh, oh. let me turn oh. off this overdrive. Maybe that's what. We're so yeah, we've got a. So what how, what did you put together? Carve this sound. Like, explain, explain this thing to me because I am literally someone who has no idea how it works. Right. Okay. I've that's... never, I've never owned one. I've never played with one. Yeah, that's why we're here. I ain't, I ain't never had. You did. will today. Okay. So, I mean, essentially, what we're dealing with are impulse responses. Okay. Um, now, these, as Robert pointed out, um, I took this out of the box right before we shot this. So. It probably needs to be updated, you know, in in, oh, you know, yeah. in all honesty, because they have really cranked out. A, there's been two updates that came out very close to each other, and I have been busy shooting video for other Helix family for product products. specialization, specializing in products. Yes. Yeah. Copy. So I have not updated this. I like to keep it in the box until I need it. Okay. So I, I you know. That's what, it, that that's ensures that it doesn't get scuffy and looks right. degraded for a photo. <laughs> right. So I see a couple smudges, but well, uh, that's from my greasy hands. Yeah, that's true. I did feed you tacos right before. Th- was, oh man, they were awesome. <laughs> Got a too. little chorizo on that HX yeah. what I'm, there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here for the tacos. HX con chorizo. <laughs> <laughs> that should be a preset. We should make a preset in honor of this day. <laughs> I, I think that's a great idea. Why don't you build it right now? Um. Okay. Let me. Give a little background for okay, those of give you me, that are uh, not... Yeah, finish. I moved on too quickly. Well, you moved pretty quick. That's true. I'm fast. There's, there's, I don't look it. You're fast. Um, Without the S. <laughs> 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 you know what? Thank you. I'll be here all night. You know what? Um, so those of you familiar with this, the HX or Helix Family products already, the predecessor to this, which is still in production, the HX Stomp, is basically a stripped down, most compressed version of the Line 6 Helix that you can get. It has three buttons, and originally it had six effects blocks. How, that, yeah. in comparison to this piece of gear right here, uh-huh. is it like half the size? It's about exactly half the size. Okay. Yeah, literally, you know, that's that's pretty much what the original looked like like right there gotcha. and then you know squeeze this button didn't over. have that fourth little button it was this tub the top right. two right. thirds was the display and yeah and the original controls. the original intention for this was to be something that guys would use on a pedal board because there are guys out there like you to name one i'm a guy i'm out here you are out here and you were very uh passionate about the gear you use mm-hmm. I'll, I'll use that word how about that passion i think that's fair and it was made for guys Accurate. like you who want to be able to maybe have amp modeling capabilities, uh, but still That kind of stuff definitely comes in handy these days, especially, yeah. in my opinion, as it like starts to sound better. Now, I, I, my, my problem is and has always been the way it feels. Hearing and loss. I, and I haven't... Yeah, that too. Um, well, let me, let me point... Some, let me... Tell you a funny story about that. Okay, I like stories. Great story. When I first started, I felt the same way. Now, this was when Helix was in its infancy. This was literally its first year. It had just been released when they hired me. And they said, you know, we need, oh, yeah. we need somebody out here who's going to push this thing to out, the stratosphere. Somebody out here to sweep pick. Yeah, we need somebody out it. here to do sweep arpeggios and play Stairway to Heaven. <laughs> you know, and there's nothing me. funnier. I digress one moment. There's nothing funnier than Stairway to Heaven played on an out of tune guitar. To me. Like on purpose. You just reminded me of something else funny that I would kind of want to share. Okay, sure. At some other point. Well, okay. I played a gig recently, believe it or not. Uh, uh, oh, was you know, it the one we discussed 
over yeah over food probably over tacos. probably same same group of same bunch of boys it's five bands four different groups of guys yeah. that's a rather obscure reference i apologize i, I didn't get really, it really it was okay it's from the movie extract well, by mike judge you're really cool okay i am i mean yes i am i'm very cool cool robert way to quote. colonel billy freeman once called me colonel cool billy freeman there's photo documentation. I've heard of it. that name. Uh, it's not coming back. Uh, I've some, heard of him. Uh, some biker trash. Biker trash. <laughs> yeah, that's how I know him. That's uh, the Silver Saloon, I think, in Tyler, Texas. Shout out to Billy Motorcycle Freeman. <laughs> that's right. That's, he is a biker. He Dude, really he is. is. He is. That biker. wasn't even a joke. No, he is a. He is a biker dad. Motorcycle dad. That is what motorcycle he is. Motorcycle dad. <laughs> he's a pot and pan beaten motorcycle dad that's what he is wow that's it took me like 30 seconds to get that uh so i did play a gig recently i'll just be quick uh, with a with a singer who um really good guy you know but the you know how it is sometimes when singers play a rhythm guitar <laughs> that's never a good sign when the first description <laughs> yeah. of the singer is Good, good, good guy. Really, how are they? Super nice, dude. Super nice guy, man. What a nice guy, man. But the dude had a oh, had a Taylor. So nice. This this guy had a an acoustic guitar that was not quite in tune, and he couldn't he couldn't seem to get it there. And so I guess maybe that to, can prove challenging at times. And to compensate, uh, there was some sort of digital chorus on his guitar good. all night. Good and it was God. the it was the what? It, was no, it Al Demiola? No, dude, and it, it had like it it had like some kind of top end boost, <laughs> you know, like let's boost the top end of the of EQ. a Taylor of this Taylor with, with some chorus, and uh, it, there were times when I winced. I'm going to be honest with you; it doesn't seem like a good tonal choice on his part. No, it was not. Uh, and again, I'm not. Guy, good guy, man, and I'm and I was I had a blast, you know. Um, but I just kept thinking, Gigs dude, can be fun. Yeah, and I kept. I've thinking always that, said that. I was just thinking, dude, all you got to do is put it down, and just just be the singer. Or you can just do like George Strait and just hold it. Or you can do like George Strait and unplug it. Yeah. Or, or rather, never plug it in. Yeah. And sometimes play it, but usually hold it. Yeah. You, well, you know, it helps to have a guitar. When you're standing in front of people. Yeah, especially if you're going to stand totally still. But, you know, George Tracy, he's famous for that guy. Well, yeah. I can't, whose name I cannot pronounce. Well, it's tough. It's uh, it's, it's one syllable. Yeah, it is It is one syllable. But, yeah. Um, so, 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 yeah, if, you can't, if you're having trouble tuning your guitar, don't use chorus on top of it. That's all okay. I'm saying. So, George Strait aside... Let's talk about this HX stomp. Okay, so we said we, we got it out of the it. box today. You don't know anything about line six stuff, unfortunately, but let's just no. try, let's see if we can figure it out. Yeah, the blind uh, unboxing. So those of you that are familiar with the Helix family or HX family of products from Helix, line six, HX is short HX for is, Helix. Yes, yes. I don't know how they came up with that, but that's what those they do. both the, the first and last letters of Helix as H and X. I had literally never considered that. You're right. You know what? You're right. You guys just needed an outside perspective, and I offered but that. But let me make a distinction. Please. This is not the Helix Stomp, specifically not the Helix Stomp. It is the HX Stomp. Yeah, because it's an abbreviated Helix. Touche. Does that mean that it's? Overall, like capacities are limited, or that the co the controls are more. Compact. Well, you know, sometimes with limitation comes freedom. Oh, here we go. <laughs> here we here we go. <laughs> Quick, he, somebody get him a soapbox. He's box. laughing because he knows he's that I'm right. I don't know if that's why he's laughing, but how long do we have for this? I will explain. Anyway, you got to split. All you got to right. split for another gig, or. <laughs> 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 what time is this thing over? I got uh, I got to split, man. I got no, man. Gig. I've got all night. Got we, can we can get philosophical if you want. I was, anyway. I was hoping. Okay, that I'm we sorry. Would get somewhere. I, I digress. So the HX Stomp is the smallest, most condensed version of the Helix 
that you can get. And that's aforementioned just three buttons and then the display and the parameter controls, right? right? right. Is the, it those same exact parameter the can parameters options? can be adjusted on both. No, and, I'm, but I'm, I'm asking, is right. the, the actual those interfacing... Those would be the controls for the parameters. <laughs> Great story. <laughs> Tell it again. I'm sorry, man. Uh, you're just making me think of another joke with a guy, Jordan Keane. Never I mind. Know, guy, I know him. Another the guy you never heard of. He's but, a long hair too. Yeah. Anyway, Get a job, sir. Anyway, uh, so condolences. As, <laughs> the bums lost. Your revolution is over. Airplane? I think so. Those okay. are some quality mics. Now that's when you know you got a quality. Mic. I, I literally felt that in my body as it flew over. I felt <laughs> that the wasn't the plane. That, that was that chorizo, probably. Uh, I, I did eat a single chorizo taco. <laughs> Onward. Um, so the original HX Stomp had three buttons, um, and it had a six effects blocks that could be used uh, at a time on the Kind of like the blocks chain. on your shirt? Uh, yes, only this would be more uh, indicative of a full-blown helix floor or rack. Copy. Because um, as you just mentioned, there's limited parameter blocks. There are limit limitations to the parameter controls. Yeah, basically, uh, your your limitation is in DSP, right? And you, uh, I don't believe you work for Line Six. I don't think you qualify <laughs> to make that kind of. Because you can run a second chain, right? It's just that you're you're you using up your this? blocks uh, on, on the on the stop. Uh, you well, you can split right. something, but what did you say? Something about DSP? That's yeah, you're still you still can only use X amount of DSP, right. which is substantially less than what like a full blown Helix would have. However, so it's the same processor but a different size. Is there... Right, you just let, okay. DSP is just a you know. Can you explain computers to me? Not really. Okay. Oh, uh, I can tell you this: DSP is basically internal memory. I did know that actually. Okay, well, because I told you probably. It's funnier if I say, "Can you explain computers to me?" Because you know I can't. And it sounds funny. I wouldn't understand it. It's funny to say it, and then it's even funnier to ask me. That's true. So, so <laughs> Lyndon, uh, you may be aware of this. Um, some recent updates in recent times. Um, not in them older times, and and these here. <laughs> no, these. Not in, these are not in yesteryear. We're in post-COVID times. Post-COVID. It's certainly post-COVID for me because I had it. <laughs> me too. Oh. <laughs> and it sucked because I couldn't taste the fried pies that my wife made. Sorry, babe. Your fried pies were off. Sorry, babe. See you when I get home. <laughs> man, I, you know what? Let me just do this. Let me finish. Today, Can we finish man, this? I, I apologize. <laughs> Tony we... brings it out on me. He literally <laughs> begs for it. Can we finish this without you? His animal. energy is begging for my <laughs> animal, for my dude. ridiculousness. You know, the thing about my energy is you just need it here all the time. You know, before, yeah, so you, you just never even come over. Before today, I, I was... have to like cook for twelve hours to get you to come over. You didn't cook for twelve hours today. Yeah, it's the first time ever. It's it was actually kind of awesome. Uh, and you know what? Can we talk about that real quick? Sure. When this when this thing got rescheduled the the second time, first time was my bad because I had COVID. Second time, what happened to all that food? Uh, we ate it over the next three days. We? Aaron and I. <laughs> I yeah, last last week when, when we had to cancel, I made uh, green chorizo and homemade tortillas and two different salsas. Could have done a whole podcast on that. And uh, black beans. And yeah, well... If you're interested in any of that, you can follow at Bobby Jam's Kitchen on Instagram and YouTube. Solid. Plug. Oh, on YouTube plug. too. That's interesting. YouTube, YouTube as well. I've I've only posted. I've only published two videos so far. I have a bunch of others in editing. That's interesting. That's interesting. I've got some things on YouTube as well. Yeah, you do. I'm sure you've, you've never got, seen any. I of have. Them. You've got lessons, and I. You were talking about. Uh, I think it was harmonic minor something over. Uh, it was like an E minor thing. What's your handle? Is it just Tony Campanova? That was done. Yeah. Um, are you talking about YouTube? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
That's, yeah, <laughs> I don't know what you it, said, but yeah. Is, is it yeah. different somewhere? Is it different? You have different t- uh, handles for each account? Well, it's, uh, it's always something Tony Campanella. Yeah, so I've got my... Uh, uh, C-A-M-P-O-N-O-V-O. I've got my Toyota Pro Off-Road Channel. And that's T-C-T-R-D. Uh, and then I've got my classic Chevy channel. What are you doing with that? Just taking pictures of your freshly washed truck? Yeah, I'm, I'm customizing for uh, off-road uh, Toyota Tacomas and uh, taking them off-road. Are you really? No. I was like, I said, it, it's something I would have believed. I was just trying to be super random. I mean, be, I know and, that you have. pull it off. You own two of those. I have owned two of them. Oh, you I only own the one. Old one. I had to. I had nowhere to put it. You have a driveway. I've seen it. That was, Now... When I'm not when I was in Texas, all I hear is excuses, bro. You stubbed your sorries in a sack, dude. Nobody is more sorry. You know that wasn't just a truck. Wasn't it? <laughs> that that was me. That wasn't just stuff that got blown up in that building. That was me. Play this thing. Uh, okay, so this is the new and improved. Uh, Enough HX, of your stories. Play. HX Stomp XL. I'll play a bit and then play I'll explain me. what we're looking at. Play I was me. warmed up until we started talking again. That's mm-hmm. fucking... Yeah, we'll probably want to edit that one out. Uh, oh, shit. Did I just mess that up? Uh, no, you're, good. That you're good. Yeah, it's okay. okay, so there's obviously some sort of drive. So what uh, impulse response? Or- uh, so what we're dealing with here is... Uh, What's this chain? I threw this little patch together oh. just before we started. The Tony um, Campanovo special. Yeah. This is just the... Tell me more. Well, the amp that I'm using is the Line 6 Litigator. Okay. What that really is is an impulse response of a dumble. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, it's one of my favorite sounding amps on here. Uh, as you can tell, it's very kind of mid gainy, not not super high gain. I would, yeah, I would call that medium. Yeah, medium, mid, medium. Yeah, this is the same, same thing. Yeah, they are medium, medium. Yeah, I don't know that scale. Do you know that one? Uh, super medium. Super medium. Yeah, yeah. I remember. Mi- uh, about mix a medium. Uh, medium altered. Maybe that's what it was. Yeah. All right. This is that was the dorkiest thing. Harmonic, that's midi- ever harmonic medium. Harmonic medium. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you got you got kind of a double thing. Um, is the IR included in this amp? Um, this this is all stock stuff. Okay. I barely. Yeah, he literally just took it out of the box. Remember when I talked about that? You guys remember? Yeah, I think we mentioned it like three times. Remember? Um, remember when I talked about? Remember? That? I, I remember. Don't I remember. you dare bring up Pepperidge Farms. <laughs> uh, so you've got the I, dumble, and then what? Uh, I'm using what the else? I'm using the single twelve inch cabinet from a Fender Deluxe. Okay. Mm-hmm. Which we've choice. already talked about how much we love those. They are. With a, uh, with a with uh, a with your choice of microphone, but for this case, I believe. Oh, so, so you can choose how you mic it now. Was that always the case? Well, you can choose. Update? You can choose the mic that you're using. Okay. No, no so I didn't know that you could. Do, have you always been able to do that? Yes, I did not know. That. Uh, I'll say this, and Lyndon, you can back me up here. That's the number one most important feature on any Helix hx family product is the mic options because if you put a 57 on there and then you come to me and tell me it sounds brittle bro sounds thin man i'm gonna know that you're dumb and i'm gonna tell you something ridiculous probably ask you to vote for me for senate or something you know what i mean i'm sorry that was ridiculous uh, sorry (laughs) yeah i'm tony i'm sorry that was ridiculous that was hateful and mean um I, uh, don't you, you know, dare bring up politics on this set. Don't don't come to me and tell me a fifty seven sounds brittle on the HX or the Helix because duh, it just duh, you know. Okay, <laughs> it duh, just, it just, just duh, it just duh, just duh. That <laughs> but, I love that. But, you know, Stealing that. So what I did just was duh. you know, and a fifty seven is great in a live context. And you have that option here. And don't get me wrong, there are some IRs on here. Of a real 57 works great. But a real, well, a real 57 works great. That there's air moving there, and that's yeah. different. Yeah, well, a digital IR of a 57 works great in front of certain amps. 
such as like a can you do you only get one mic option uh yes and no okay uh first of all i was gonna say there are some like plexi yours does one mine does two no big deal um what i said yours only does one mine does two no big deal your what does two the ox oh that thing yeah and don't get me started on that thing. Um, oh, well, we're here to talk about lines. You're um, not. You're not a UA product specialist. First of all, you know I used to know the UA guy for my region. That's like saying, uh, yeah, I once saw Jimi Hendrix. Really? Yeah. You you think the UA guy is is? I'm saying <laughs> it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> is that a rivalry? Like in, I used to in know the U. In Wait, what? First of all, which one is the guy? <laughs> Well, he doesn't even work for him now. I think he moved to L.A. So do you? So you don't know? You used to know. I used to know a that's guy. That's why was, you used to know. Right. You still know the guy. He's just not the U.A. guy. I don't think he is, or he just trains territories so he could pursue Look, his. Tony, we didn't career. bring you here to big time us, okay? We did it, man. You've you been got, to lots hey, of meetings in L.A. I'm not the one bragging about my UA products back here while I got the Line 6 guy <laughs> right, right, on my right, podcast. Right. Yours, yours does one, mine does two. It's fine. Let's move on. You know what, Robert? I remember my first. Beer. Okay, so what about the plexi and it was dump, a few and double micing? Because I <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> that's it. It just went. It just it just got too much. I can't handle that. Uh, I, I, can't I, top that. I'm sorry. I'll I'm sweating. It. I'll take I'm it. Sweating, Robert. That's not because of the conversation, unfortunately. Well, there's a lot of reasons. There's two or three factors. It's not what you think. <laughs> well, that's, anyway, can I finish? Yeah. Please. Can, can I finish? finish? Can I finish? Can, Can I finish? finish? Yeah. I don't know. Please finish. I'm from Texas. Great story. Tell it again. The the pre, the, the prexy, prexy. The plexi. Some of the British plexis, which as you could probably guess, those are Marshall presets. Uh, they come stock with a 57 mic in front of the cabinet in this virtual world of, of uh, impulse responses and digital effects within Helix. They sound great. They sound aggressive and they cut. And they just sound great. Now, you can always change the high cut and the low cut of any mic. And you can change the distance the mic is from the cabinet. Which will, the farther back the mic is, obviously, the more bottom end you lose. Yeah. And volume. Now, having said that, why would you or I use a 57 if we could use a 121 or a 160, perhaps? Or a Neumann. Well, like because the, the real move is to blend the two and use both mm, well mm. you can the I'm real the real move to me is to hear the amplifier with no microphone naked well, yeah naked I, I like that but that's not possible in recording you can't show up at everyone's house and reproduce the song every time so you have to mic it and lay it down well you do have to mic it and you can mic it if you, I like to when I ref- you can mic it if you have to. I'll put it to you that way. If you're using a big two hundred pound tube amp, no, but I'm but I'm saying that what sounds good to me is putting a fifty seven and a one twenty one on there. Or a, a I prefer not to record or, with a fifty seven personally, but that's just me. See, my fifty seven is my go to. Any ears, it, it, it does. It sound you all. You also not you're not playing British style amps. You're playing. American Fender circuits, which is this is a not what this I is play. a Dumble, which is uh, kind of like a Marshall. Well, well, right, but we were just specifically talking about actual amps. So, um, Tony, can you run us through it this uh, through this chain? It does. It sounds fantastic. I really want to know as a uh, an well. HX it's only got user. one mic on it, so I don't know if Robert's going to be interested in. This. Hey, man, we'll <laughs> pr- mean, we'll proceed like I. I, you well, know, I, I I'll, I, I'll I, act interested. It's fine. Let's move on. <laughs> you two are like an old married couple. <laughs> you're, you're the second. You're not the first person to disgusting. say that to me, which is kind of annoying. I'm having disgusting. You know, you know what? Ro- you know what Jordan Gein said about us? No. He said you two sound like. A couple that just broke up. That used to date, but there's still a lot of tension. Mostly that comes from you. The tension? Well, the breakup. The breakup came from me. Whatever the all the bad parts. No, it takes two, baby. Takes two. Anyway, Rob was doing something right to keep y'all together (laughs) all those years. Well, all of them. Well, that's a whole other podcast again. Just shut up and make some sounds so and talk we, about them. I'm going to try to address uh, Lyndon's question here. So, yes, sir. Uh, Lyndon, 
No, I wanted to. Tony. Uh, <laughs> I just threw this together, but uh, what I did was I went to a blank. Did I even go to a blank preset? I didn't. I actually went to a preset that already had the litigator in it, but I tweaked it. Okay. So I don't remember what I did, man. This might have been. I don't remember what I did. But awesome. I do know that I picked the litigator on purpose. Okay. Uh, and I picked the. Uh, I picked the forty thirty eight ribbon mic because that's the darkest mic on this thing. And, okay. And I'll get into a little more of that. I don't know why, but I expected you to say the darkest mic on earth. <laughs> on this. And that's the darkest mic on earth. It's the darkest sounding mic. That is the darkest the sounding helix. mic on the face of the and earth. I and I can talk about that. I could talk about all this for four hours. I well, really we could. We have as much time as we want, but I refuse I to mean, do nobody's that. Nobody's going to watch this. We got all day. That's true. Or night. Anyway, uh, so it's been a hard day's night, <laughs> you Tony. Yeah. So I picked the litigator because it's a nice, crispy sounding amp. It's mid gain. Mm-hmm. It's wholesome. I thought if I was, you know. It's Robert Miller. You know, what do I want? That's me. I, want I want something with a nice, wholesome sound, a guitar yeah. sound. So we're mid game. No games. I bumped the mids up here to 6.7. Not that that. From 0.0? 0. 0? Is that uh, where they started? No, it was, everything was on 555. Five, five. Mid bass treble was all five. Uh, turned the treble down a bit. You may not know this about me, Robert, but I like a lot of mid range. I do know that about you. So I turned the treble down a bit. Bumped up the mids a bit. And then I turned the presence up to about four and a half. They were on zero originally. Okay. Uh, I set the, 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 I think this factory, whatever, whenever you use the uh, Dumble or the Litigator, you're going to get the, the US Deluxe 1x12. Mm-hmm. Changed the mic to the 4038, put it right as close as it would go. And that's about it. I think this might have had uh, spring reverb at first. There was, oh, did you take the verb off? Well, I changed it to spring. I mean, a uh, plate. Oh, copy. Um, yeah. what, are the, what are the op- what are the options? Plate, plate spring. Plate and... is plate is my favorite crappy reverb. So, uh, I you know it's better than spring to me. Okay. I don't like spring reverb. Some of the some of the legacy uh, ones that they that were I on well, you no, know the, sort the, of the, the, the spring M-series. reverb is good. Yeah. I just don't care for spring reverb. I sure. should have said that. I shouldn't yeah. have been so offensive. But I, I'm saying it's as, good, as a user, I, I on gigs, I throw the the legacy spring on there. Uh, what is it, the yeah. 63 spring? I can't do it. I can't really? do it. I just don't care for spring I reverb. Ta- I set yeah. it low, and it you know it's just it's well, nice. Well, I've, I've used real spring reverb on amps before. Uh, when I used to play, uh, well, that Mesa Boogie, and I had a PV uh, what were the PV? You had a classic thirty. Though. I had classic a classic 30. thirty. That thing caught on fire at a gig. Awesome! That's rock and roll, man. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't after the gig. The amp caught on fire. There was no yeah, music I, happening. Yeah, I believe they call that. that stop dropping. Roll. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that was quick. Thank you. Yeah, that that was back when I was Thank playing you. at uh, you know Thank you. Uh, at LSA. No, was it LSA? What was the place we used to play at all the time? It was such the a Burger cool. Spot? LSA Burger Company? Not or? in Denton. That other one. that uh, Bronson Rock. Do you remember that place? Oh, no. in Keller? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, that was such a good gig. It I was only so played chill. there once, and I literally only remember that I did play there. And that is the There were so many solid memory. wallpaper gigs in, in I just loved it that because area. it was it was chill, low pressure and mm-hmm. I don't know, I just it was outside, it just something about it just felt relaxing to me. But I remember I do actually remember that the I played there one of the first couple of weeks that they were open. It was the only time I ever played and like the PA was like really underpowered or something. There was something weird about the PA. I don't remember that really, but I'm sure they they either worked it out or they didn't. Well, uh, Never my, went back. Shout out to Bronson Rock. Well, <laughs> rest in peace. Well, I was just gonna say, you know, in those days, I was using like I was using a minimalist pedal board, literally with like a tuner and a delay and a tube screamer. You know, that was my pedal board. <sighs> Tube and then screamers or something like that. You know what I mean? It was a two, it was it was some kind tube of, screamer. No, it's probably a Boss OD one. Those are those actually sound way better than a tube <laughs> screamer, in my opinion. Dude, I've got a I've got an Ibanez tube screamer, like an old one. 
As opposed to an Ibanez tube screamer. Well, like, you know, those, the 808s or whatever they yeah, are. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. They sound great. The I love 808 them. 808 TS9 and a 903. Is that the, the Yeah, like I, don't third, I don't know. I don't Who cares? They all sound like this. This is what a tube screamer does, and I don't like and that. That's right, why, Robert. We and get it. That's why you use those. That's why Death you like to those. sound. It's just great in a okay, you, keep, you don't want to be heard. You keep talking, and I'm going to prove you. I will. This is my podcast. I'm going to keep talking. I, I'm going to prove you. Um, <laughs> I'm not going to prove you wrong. I'm just going to prove you wrong about the context. Of what? And I'm going to use these digital devices. Do you remember what you were talking about? Well, originally we were talking about a small minimalist pedal board. Minimalist. Pedal minimalist. Board. Medium? Medium? You're cut off, medium, sir. That, that medium <laughs> augmented scale. <Check. laughs> that medium <laughs> altered. Uh, yeah, but, you know, I use spring reverb on that amp because I just used delay on my pedal board. This was before I got into all this crazy stuff. Was it, did, do you have a particular characteristic that you just don't like about it? Is about it, spring reverb? Yeah. I don't like the springy sound. I can hear it and it mm, sounds like the twang. drip. It sounds like twang. And, yeah. and it, sounds, it sounds like the fifties to me. Yes, it does. Yeah, like, I don't it's like got it. vintage vibe. Dick, Dick I, I like that. I mean, there's a time and a I place mean, for everything. Yeah, for sure. But I, I think more of like, like, uh, Motown soul sure. stuff. Yeah. For, yeah. And I and I love those tones. I guess maybe, personally. maybe the reverb just doesn't. I, I'm also mind. not a big reverb guy in general. And if I ever use yeah, it, I knew that about you. I I use like, uh, you know, plugins and stuff. I have plates and chamber and blah blah blah. But well, in a in a live setting, I've only ever used spring. Well, um, but I but you know I play real amps, so that's what happens sometimes. Now, currently, I'm using a plate reverb. The well, original sounds good. It's very. Uh, well, Rich. the decay is turned up pretty high. This decay is on seven, and you can now. I I have my tone rolled back a bit here, but where's fact, uh, where's your mix at? All the way. <laughs> uh, in terms of the blend, where's the the mix at on that? Reverb? For the reverb, uh, I'd have to tell you, uh, it's at twenty nine percent. Okay, so it's pretty high. I don't usually have yeah. my reverb that high. But I just threw this in there, and uh, something just floated—a a fuzz or something just floated. That's down a floater. That's, that's, a, the, that's uh, a sign of a health problem. That's the uh, acid that I put in your beer. Oh, it's that's why it purple. tastes all twangy. Mm -hmm. what, is that why it tastes all purple? Mm -hmm. um, so um, it's very throaty sounding. Right. Well, I had the tone all the way back there. Which a Tube Screamer helps with that, which I'm not using a Tube Screamer right now. I don't have any overdrive on this. This is still just the litigator. So that's uh, impulse response breakup? Yeah. Okay. Does it, will it clean up uh, with, it, the, with the volume knob, I mean? It, it will eventually. Like on your guitar? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, it will. Yeah, it, I thought, it I responds thought you meant, in that I way. thought you they meant on do. the amp, but yeah, it'll... Uh, something can uh can i plug this guitar into that absolutely oh, one second one second i can mute this if you yeah mute it i'll tune this thing real quick too okay yeah thank there's, you there's a tuner in here uh I'm also gonna, I, sold i assumed i was going to use it oh okay cool this is it's, gonna make for great audio it's a little bit um you ever notice the tuner is a little too sensitive in this thing? I like it actually, because uh, real... I'm, I'm I use the uh, normally on my big board. I have got the uh, what's this the man white? Needs more blankets and less blankets. What's the white one that everybody uses? Um, Polytune. Polytune, yeah, and oh, that's yeah. got uh, that's a real sensitive tuner, mm. um, and that one's pretty similar to that. So right, I, you, I, you, I prefer you that. Uh, you ready? If I am, I'm ready. Do it. <laughs> Man, I didn't know you played guitar, Rob. I, uh, thought, I thought you were a bass player. I mean, I am. Uh, can I ask you uh, real quick what year this guitar is? 71. Ah. Yeah, it's only, uh, it's only four years younger than Rob. 
He's older than me, so he loves that comment. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was gonna say there's just there's just no denying an early '70s Gibson. Oh man, tone. that guitar sounds fantastic. It's real weird. It's got a tiny neck on it, and I don't usually like that, but it plays great. Yep, those humbuckers are hot. They're actually really low output. Really? I mean, he was tracking, you know, negative, negative 20, and you're at negative 15 right now. I'm probably also playing harder. Well, also was, uh, I had, a uh, coil tap for a lot of it, too. Okay. So it Can you give me something like... A super clean sound? I would like to hear a super... Oh, let's see. Now... So this is gonna bring me to another cool point. Uh, Ooh, about like the 4038 mic. That's the mic, yeah. Um, If you want clean and buttery, if you want a Tony... a TC tone... Oh... Uh, and you're probably... And you're probably thinking, you know, is that the Tony that... I've never heard of. Is that the Tony Campanova that I've never heard of? Yeah, so I'm gonna fix you up with something. That's the one. I'm gonna fix you up with something, Rob. Gosh, you just went through like three extreme sounding amps really quick. <laughs> kind of kind of cool. Oh, that's a Soldano. That's a Sol Soldano lead clean. Just call me Warren Haynes, bro. That's not where I was going. It just hit there and it sounded good, so, so I, I stopped. I, I, I'm actually really interested in this topic because I sometimes have trouble finding a super clean sound. I mean, this like doesn't a, sound clean. To like me. It a, sounds. A, oh no, right. it's not clean. It no, just I mean, I, sounded good, so I stopped. My right. preference as a as a player on a real, you know, like real amp is going to be pedal platform most of the time. You know, I'm I'm not really a matchless player, but. Uh, so that's what I look for, so I don't have to change all my settings on my pedal board to accommodate the amp that I'm using digitally at a gig. Oh, by the um, way, the distortion pedal was on, too. That's why that did sound Okay. Like super no, I'm clean, hitting this so. mic. I was like, gotcha. what is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are listening to the Gear and Beer Podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Bobby Jam's Kitchen. Want to take your home cooking to the next level? Need new recipe ideas or meal inspiration? Like, follow, and subscribe to Bobby Jam's Kitchen on YouTube and Instagram. At Bobby Jam's Kitchen. Cook your food and eat it. Okay, so Noah's Arcade. Let's yeah, no. <laughs> Wayne's World Two, best Wayne's World. Wayne's World One was great. You just said three screwed up things in a row that I can't let you get away with. First of all, it's from Wayne's World One. No, Second Arcade of all, Wayne's, Wayne's World, World One is the best. Second Wrong. of third of all, you say two is no, sir. No, sir. I, I don't know. I Maybe like, two is good. I feel like point two and three were the same point. But yeah, two does have Christopher Walken, though. Yes, so, exactly. So, it so, yeah. surely does. But you're right. Noah's Arcade is the Rob Lowe And one. Charlton Heston. And Charlton Heston's in that second one, for sure. Yeah. Until he gets... Uh, he, he replaces the original actor for the scene. He's awesome, dude. You're right. You're right. Prob <laughs> second one probably is better than the That's first the one, one. with Wayne Stock. It's, it's it's just... Well, it's, Van Halen, who else? It's everything you like from the first one amplified <laughs> to a sequel. An old man fashioning a kayak out of a log? What? No! <laughs> I, that was the first movie I ever owned. <laughs> Dude, it might have been... The, that one and Batman, the original Batman. I think though I might have got both of those at the same time on VHS. The Michael Keaton Batman. Yeah. Batman, the best Batman. I think the, the original Batman was Adam West, was it not? Nah, uh, but that not to me, man. Michael Keaton's character was just dark and mysterious. And Are we like, rolling? We're rolling. Turn Sorry. that air off. 
What are you playing, it's Bob? Off. Oh, you got the fan on too. Like I hear it. We don't, you, we don't. We don't need any of that. It it's fine. What there are you playing is. there, Bob? What uh, are you playing through? I mean, uh, you tell me. You plugged it in. All right, cool. So, uh, since you ask, <laughs> oh look there, <laughs> look. There. Yeah. Dead giveaway. Can you see that, Lyndon? No. Pull it closer. Oh yeah, to it's you. on the GoPro. Go, uh, Rob's got that monitor. Is it showing up okay? You pull it closer to you. Uh, towards your body, not up. But yeah, that's fine. Okay, never mind. Just stop. Stop it. I would st- stop it now. Dude, tell me, man. I was. It's fine. This is. This is. I see it. I we are killing the game, Rob. There just is. hit the mic again. There it is. Oh yeah. There Excuse you go. Me. We're good. So just flip it over. Okay. Here no, we go. I will. Let's do it. Yeah. How's that look? They're great. So we're we're here with the Podgo Wireless. <laughs> the sponsors are rolling in. We're. <laughs> the sponsors are rolling in, and the headphones are falling off. <laughs> Does that sound you good? Know, the, the truth is, you could probably get me fired with something on here, and I would be screwed. And I would be like, "Okay, Robert, why would I, I need? Do that? I need at least five gigs of gigs a week right now because you made me lose my job." Man, I gotta play like five gigs on Friday. I'll just settle for five <laughs> a week. I'll settle for that. That's beautiful. Thank you. Okay, so what is that cord? Wireless. Wait Tell a minute. Me. Wait a minute. What was that last chord? The second to last. Not that one, the first, the, uh, yeah. Yeah. Were you on F sharp? No, it's a G. G, but an F sharp over it? It's, uh... It's like uh, E triad on top. First inversion E triad on top. It's not E. It's... I can't hear... No, I'm saying that you have an E major triad on the top, so you got G sharp oh. B E on top. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, so it's a G seven F. flat, uh, G G thirteen flat nine. With a what in the bass? A G? G. No. Okay, now stop because I can hear myself. Yes, sir. Very beautiful. Hey, I have an idea. Mute these channels. Take. One of oh shit, we're gonna need another cable. I can't mute while we're recording, but I will take the gain down if you need to change something. No, well I was gonna say I I don't have an extra cable up here. Dude, just keep playing. Let's talk about this a little bit more. Okay, let's do that. Because we're on a roll. I was gonna say like we can get good. them both going so that you could hear. Ah uh, no, it's I didn't mean to. That's good. So you can edit some of that out. <laughs> but I mean, we, uh, we don't have to start until here. We we don't have much, yeah, and well, I can yeah edit it ever. Yeah, we're we're five minutes in right now. Okay. So, Rob, you're playing the PodGo. PodGo Wireless, yes. Yes. Okay, so it's a, real quick. Um, you know, everybody, hopefully, that's watching this may already be familiar with the PodGo, which we released uh, two... Oh, it's we now. Well, line six. Two years ago, Yamaha I Yamaha Guitar believe, Group. Of y- well, actually, it's Tony Campanovo from Yamaha Guitar Group. That's what I'm saying. Line six... Did y'all kick you him out of the group? S- no. You could say... No. You could say I'm line six, but Yamaha Guitar Group is like this broader thing. I don't know why I'm even telling you this, man. It's it's line six. <laughs> it's line six and Ampeg and Yamaha Guitars. Oh, Ampeg? I thought that was uh, that other company. They are another company. They are not line six. Welcome but they to actually uh, are. Wall Street Journal and Beer podcast. No, but I, yeah. but I thought it was uh, St. Louis Music or something like that. I do not know, man. Cool. I can tell you, yeah. as of two or three years ago, three probably ish, uh, wait, Ampeg wait, wait, became. Wait for it. Right, carry on. That's a suspenseful chord for what I'm about to say. Um, you know, Yamaha, Ampeg became part of Yamaha Guitar Group along with Line Six. I did not know Ampeg was part of that. I didn't either. Yeah, until, and it's been. Until you tell me just. And now. Uh, I should have brought something over here from Ampeg because I've got a freaking sweet little rocket bass amp that's like pristine. I barely use it. Interesting. And a Yamaha like five string bass that's pretty nice. I can't remember the ni- name of it because. Um, Is it Pacifica? No, edit this out. But you know, all the Yamaha models just are like numbers and letters, and it's like I can't remember that. It's the BX fifteen three T five flame maple. You know what I'm saying? It's like can't can't remember. Yeah, so, I bet I know what. So edit that out. Don't make me look like a dickhead, please. <laughs> it's fine. 
Um, um, so delete the whole thing. Yeah, sorry. I'm I'm maybe, maybe not all of it. <laughs> no, no, no. It's okay to say Ampeg and Line Six and everybody are part of the Omaha Guitar yeah. Group. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah, I'll be editing. I won't. I'm not so gonna, maybe look like an I'm asshole. Anyway, yeah. and um, we're back. Yeah. So um, basically, those of you that are familiar with already with PodGo Wireless or PodGo, uh, PodGo Wireless is basically the same technology, but we have also added uh, a wireless you know, processor to it. So it has a wireless uh, receiver built into the chassis. And then it comes with the G10T uh, transmitter, which is... Obviously, we just pulled this out of the box so it's not charged, so we're hardwired right yeah, now. Yeah, obviously, yeah. So, so I apologize for that crap. Well, you know. got this camera here, too, so... Okay. Well, for those of you not listening, Tony is moving around the wireless adapter. To different camera angles. Yes. Which is yes. It, it's super awesome. I was telling you before we started rolling that uh, we should talk about this even though we can't use it because it's not charged right now. But uh, this, to me, is a huge selling point because, uh, you know, if I'm on a gig and One I'm, less cable. I'm already using the HX Stomp, I like it. Uh, I've got all my presets. I can, you know, obviously roll all that stuff over via the, the software. But, but this thing, man, like, uh, you don't have to go buy another piece of gear it is and you show it like it, it plugs ideally in yes to the to the hardware so is right. that the only way to charge it is plugging it into the base because that would it's not but basically here's what you're looking at we sell the g10 the relay g10t as a separate thing so you can buy the g10 like basically the transmitter by itself if you want is that uh would you be able to buy just a transmitter and then like a, pair it up to this if something were? Well, to go you wrong? wouldn't need to if you bought this. It comes no, I'm with saying you just say if something went wrong with your oh, old one. Could you? Uh, theoretically, yeah, that should all work. Okay. Because um, I mean, eventually, that's a it's a high high wear, high use item. Yeah. Right. So wear and but, tear. Uh, as you can see today, because break. I don't use it, that's why the battery is dead. Because we bought we unboxed this right before we came in. Right. I. I can vouch for this. Anybody who has seen any of my Line 6 stuff or my YouTube channel or my Instagram, you will see that I have one of these transmitters in my guitar all the time. So it's, you know, and I don't call it out. It's like I'm just sure. using it. So yeah, it's like this is a part of my... Because it works. Yeah, so you can get an idea for, you know, how it works by watching any of those. Um, unfortunately... I should have charged this one because I would love to show you, but it's really nifty. So go to my YouTube channel or any details, of that stuff. man. Just details. Yeah, check yeah, out any of my stuff. At yeah, Tony Campanovo uh, backslash Line Six America. Hot right? licks. Yeah. Uh, uh, dot H A W T L I X dot org dot gov dot gov forward slash dot edu dot licks. Yes. Dot licks. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, so we got. I see the same little blocks. Is it? Does this have the same or more limited good capabilities? Question. Very good question. Okay, so <laughs> you're essentially looking at the same processing. Now, we don't market this as HX or Helix, but if you took them apart, they have the same basic core processor. Okay. Okay, so, and a lot of the amps and effects are the the same, you know, meaning you'll you'll see particle reverb on both of these. Okay. You'll see the, K same, same name for the effects. Yeah, you'll see uh, consistent through you'll see the minotaur the on both of these, uh plexi, anything. The litigator yeah. was on both of these. Okay. Yeah. Um so they essentially do That's the Dumble impulse response, right? Yeah. Right, right. Copy. And and what's what's here's what's cool about it to me. And I'm not a salesman, so I don't mean to sound like a salesman. Too late. But sometimes I have to tell people about this stuff, and so to me, you are you are a specialist in these products, right? I am products I by am. trade, and and you know they didn't make me. I already was. They just chiseled away the exterior. Here we, here we are. Let's let's bring this reference back. Run it back. Sorry, run it back. Sorry. Let's keep it. No, it's you know. <laughs> All right, Rambo. Let's go. Um, so, it, what are are there differences? Let's start there. Which, are there any differences? There are differences. Okay. okay. So, the first thing is obviously the chassis for the HX Stomp XL is basically 
uh, extremely robust. Okay, I'll put it to you that way. I see. Um, I can see a difference in build for sure. You can look at it and tell that's a thick ply of sheet of metal that was yeah. like, you know, stamped or forged into this shape. The stuff that they make, you know, boutique pedals out of that are super heavy duty and durable. Yeah. And and the uh the original HX Stomp is Is to that me this just, particular hmm? poly No, it's it's the same as this, and to me it's even more robust because it's like closer to being a perfect square yeah. and it's like the weight is perfect. And it's like you could hit somebody with this and it would do damage. If I threw this at your head, Oh man, even the stomp is robust. That's what I'm saying. The yeah. stomp is like yeah. more robust. Than it's this not one. a piece of plastic. It's yeah. Because a, of the yeah, shape. Yeah. yeah. The so is, is this plastic or is this some sort of like yeah, this is, thin metal? This is a plastic, but it does have some like thin metal parts, Okay. but it's mostly plastic. Um, so it is less conducive to rugged road-like conditions. Totally, totally. If you're maybe for more of like a bar picker on weekends, or I would say bar picker on the weekends, um, or I would go so far. I mean, I've used you do worse. sessions and stuff. I would church do, gigs, anything with no stage volume. You definitely do church gigs. You could definitely do. You know, as a professional, you could use it. Um, the thing about it is, I wouldn't. Think I wouldn't use it five nights a week and think that it's going to last too long because wear and tear. And I, and that's not a crack against the product. It, it is what it is. It's made that way so that it's affordable for more. Yeah, more I mean people. you know you what, live this. What life. is uh, what's retail for this um, or MSRP or whatever it's called? You know what? S since you can edit it out, let me look it up. For yeah, me. for sure, for sure. <laughs> and I yeah, probably no, no, I gotta get it. I gotta get it. Let's keep on creating editing work for me. Well, or you can just pause it. Or stop it. You can just hit stop. No, it's okay. That's what we should have done instead of... My favorite of your here. Instagram videos, I think. I always come back to that. Alright, there's that one. So, five, basically. Ah. Hey, let me hear that open lick one more time. What do you mean? The, the one that you repeat. No, 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 no. Uh, let me hear it slow. Yeah. Okay. That's nice, man. That's a nice lick. Okay, just so so back to your question, yes. Lyndon. Yes. Um, <laughs> real quick. I was trying to play a lick. I know, man. I'm just I'm trying to keep you from having to edit. Oh, uh, the the Line Six HX Stomp XL uh, retails for seven fifty. I mean, it's so about two fifty more than the Stomp. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, I think when I bought the Stomp, it was maybe four fifty. I mean, there's going to be some tax, you know. They and they say it's seven forty nine ninety nine, but that's sure. what is that really, you know? So, you know, basically, you're going to spend seven fifty and some change when when the taxes yeah. kick in. Um, but for what for what you get, I mean, if you if you're buying, that sounds pretty good to me. Yeah, right. And then actually. and the Podgo uh, wireless is five eighty. So what are you looking at? About a hundred and eighty dollars or so difference in the yeah. two. Um, now let's talk is about we, the trade off. I was gonna say, is build the primary difference, or is there limitations basically, to what you can do? Basically, because the controls look pretty similar. Oh, this is great beer. Uh, basically, they they both have a, a set of differences, and and it's like trade offs, different trade offs. Sure. So. Here's a cool feature in the PodGo wireless, and this is also in the PodGo. You need to play a dissonant chord? Uh, you sure. Hopefully you guys can see that. Can you see that, Lyndon? Uh, I, uh, I'm i not monitoring from there. Yes, you can uh, see that. Okay, well, anyway, you'll notice that we're going out of the main outs right now, left and right, which is like a traditional stereo out. You would use that output. Those are quarter inch. Doesn't have an XLR. Sure. Uh, they're quarter inch. They would go into stereo inputs on your mixer mm -hmm. or whatever. Or you could go mono, obviously. Um, what it also has is a dedicated amp out quarter inch <coughs> output. Oh, like a through kind of a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Effects so, only? Yes. 
Yes. Yeah, so that's if cool. You're, if you're that's using, actually very cool. Yeah, if you're using like your matchless on very, stage, that's very functional. You can bypass the amp models and everything, and just monitor your matchless, and you can use a matchless. You know, let's just see. Let's just find the matchless IR and mess with it because let's see. You play a matchless, and I know you're gonna crap all over it, but that's okay. <laughs> You gotta give me. You have to give me time to like try to dial it in. It's really hard to play when the sounds are changing like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's just really hard to play. It sounds hard to play. Okay, so right now you're on a. I have a ribbon mic. You're on a ribbon mic. Uh, are we are we on which match list are we on right now? I know there's a couple. We're on the matchstick jump. The jump? Okay. Yeah, this jumped. This is the jumped model. Is that your favorite of the matchless? Um, I have no preference. Yeah, I think you don't match, use them a lot. I think matchless is trash, to be honest. Uh, so, uh, he didn't even know. I'm not it. He didn't no, even hear. I'm no, just, no self-respecting musician would be caught playing one. I'm going to email Phil Jameson tomorrow and I'm going to tell him under no circumstances does I ever do anything nice for you. Dude, he was, I was on his radar. He was going to call me any day. It's, He's going to be like, what's that no amp guy? Oh yeah, Tony Campanovo. Is, Is that, that the Tony Campanovo I've never heard of? <laughs> <laughs> I got you, I beat you too. <laughs> okay, sorry. Anyway, we got a matchless. Matchless sound great, by the way. Now, let's, let's do some... It does not sound like a matchless to me. That sounds real woofy and broken up. Well, we're, it, we're still... It's also jumped. We're still tweaking it, dude. What That's what I told you. Are you jumping? Watch this. That's chimier and more right. mid-presence. Right. High mid-presence. Ooh. But that's, I mean, that's What's the difference like a, in a G25 and a G30? I don't know what a tw what, what they're calling a 25. A 30 is probably the DC30. That's yeah. their most popular amp. Let's try that then. Which is the one sitting right here behind us. 87 condenser mic. Let's go to a 57. That sounds better to me. Yeah. Oh, son of a bee! I just like hit the wrong button. Ah! Right. <laughs> oh, I had you sounding so good. Matchstick jump. Doesn't all the way up. Dawes Noy chord. Yeah. I like that third on top. Yeah. Yeah. I love both of those. Yeah. Keep playing. That's really pleasant. It just got way loud. It did. Tone one, two, three, four, five, six. What does that mean? Are those what? settings tone it says yes tone. that's the so this right here so what do you like is a rotary it just depends it, i would say probably one start at one all right that'll be the thinnest sounding one i keep playing it what's a rotary on the on the matchless on the ef86 side the tone knob is a six-way rotary oh i did not know that okay it's the only thing on my amp that i've ever had to replace in the what 10 years of interesting owned it. So which which uh what which what do you put your gain on, right on normally man what do you what do you have your drive set to on these when you play me uh Robert when you play your matchless I'm trying to set it up in a way that's comfortable to you I so like um I, I run it where it's breaking up, and then I, I run my volume knob back. I got my volume knob wide open now. 
if you got the if you got the rotary thing going, that means it's the EF eighty six side. So I, I would probably back that off to. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I, I just have it set on number one right now. You told me to put it on number one. That's I'm saying this the the EF eighty six tube side has the rotary tone knob and the uh, the twelve AX seven. The other side it's like the the left and the right side of the vox basically okay. um well the, the right is the match the ef86 is the beefed up version of the ef86 circuit but the left channel only has volume bass and treble and the ef86 has the, keep the, playing. Just keep the playing. tone control that's a rotary and no treble and no bass Quit turning that up, you're gonna clip us. The bass? No, the volume. It's not like you just cranked the volume. Oh. Yeah, it did. It went, it went up about 10 dB. Oh, sorry. I, I'm almost. Uh, I was trying to make it sound like comfortable again. Hey, uh, like you was playing, Rob? You gotta turn him down because normally you're supposed to run these hotter than this is running anyway. Yeah. You have to turn it up. So, yeah. Just wanna try it? Uh, I, so, I don't have a lot of room on here to come down. Um, Bring him down as much as you can. I'm on, yeah. See if you can see if you can get that low enough. So I'm I'm like damn near all the way down right now. And and how loud is he? Uh, keep playing, Rob. Rob is peaking at negative 18, which is fine for me. So if that's good for you, it's good for yeah. me. Undo whatever you just did. I'm gonna I'm gonna take you down in the monitors a little bit. Let us know what are we on right now. What is? Yeah, what, what are you? What are you doing, man? I'm working. I never some... know what he's doing down there. What What did you just do? Okay. So essentially, what you want to do is these 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 products all sound better when they're master volume, like the device volume. I dime the master volume. Is, by the way, is is seventy seventy five percent? Yeah. They 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 used to say dime it, and then they started saying yeah maybe not dime it, but you know yeah seventy five percent at least. You know, I dime it, and usually I back the drive off. Yeah. Uh, and then yeah. Uh, on gigs where I am playing, uh, you know, bro like Broadway stuff in Nashville, sh for right. instance, um, f the sound guys seem to be most pleased when I give them uh, probably like, uh, I'd say like two or three o'clock on the volume right. knob. Right. The output knob. And that goes for both the products that we've talked about today, that Podgo or any of the Helix or the HX mm -hmm. right. stomps or any of that stuff right. you want to run at about the same rack because right. it's all essentially functioning in the same way as far yeah. as how yeah. you build. It's still packages. hardware. It's, you know, you're still uh, like yeah. getting tonal differences in the same way that you would. It, it, is that right? I mean, I could be wrong about that, but like in the same way that like when you run a deluxe, I know it's not two, but like. If you run a deluxe at three, it's going to sound a lot different than right. it does at five. Right. And, and that's, that's true that's, for every amp. Every amp yeah. that, when opened up, the components get to And that's the idea behind the IRs. Ideally. You yeah. know, um, they, that they will behave that way. So basically what I did with him is I turned both channels. Right now, they're, they're both at like halfway. Halfway up. They're only okay. Up. Okay. Bass is almost a seven. And treble is still on five, but I have his bass up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it got a little, to me, it got a little throatier. It got a little more right. mid-rangey. Well, he likes that really bright sound. Uh, you know what the thing is is like, okay, 
that bright sound is is going to have to be compensated for because you're not using a real amp in a real room. So I bring the bottom end up mm-hmm. because you just you, you kind of have to. And you know, for all I know, he sets his amp that way anyway. I don't sure. know. I like the mattress because of the shape of the bottom end and because of the sparkle. It's the best best of both worlds. I I get the the booty and the the like the the boomy the, feel. The, you know the cut. And this and this feels great. Um, um, I will say uh, just a couple more little things. The presence is dimed. Okay, interesting. Um, I never dimed the presence. The on channel these. volume. That's is, where you get that brightness. The the, the sparkle comes from that yeah, presence. Yeah. I bet. In the, the it, it always feels like on the on the gig. It feels like too much to me. But right, right. now it sounds. So great. that was my vo- that was my volume rolled. This is wide open. Can you roll it back? Can you roll it back to like eight or seven or something? I, this is where I would probably play it on a gig. Yeah. Yeah, um, to me that's nice. For him, I also that sounds like you. The bias, the bias on the tubes. Yeah. Um, the bias is up above halfway, like seven point five, seven point yeah. three, somewhere in there. Do you adjust those things pretty frequently when no. you're doing presets? No. Okay, I don't. so that's just kind of the the factory setting. I'm trying to make it sound like what he's used to. You okay. Know, specifically. Yeah. Um. And and I'm going on limited experience with Matchless. Okay. You know, so I've played through his basically. Yeah. But and you I've know how it sounds. And, yeah. And, so the yeah. sag is turned down pretty low. So okay. you actually have a more articulate attack. Uh, and if I go, if the sag, yeah, goes, I don't like the sag. So that so I you can like a low the, sag. Yeah. So like the the sag is the fender thing, and the Matchless doesn't have it. No. And I have a lot of trouble when I if I were to. Play, so are you play cool with this right side. now? Uh, yeah, it's, this sag is like. But again, I've got I've very got low. cans on. So to, to what I was going to say is like the the issue for me comes in the way it feels, especially where I'm monitoring live with my own ears in on a stage as opposed to a you know a specialized environment to hear. You right, know, right. The sag is low. Yeah, I, I I don't like I don't I don't like the way that uh, th- this doesn't feel as stiff and like unresponsive as uh, impulse response or amp emulation or speaker emulation used to feel. Um, now I also added um, an overdrive pedal. Right now, there's an overdrive pedal in Is there. there? Which take one? it take it off. Take it off. Um, Give me just the amp. Get, I don't want. Well, it's set pretty low right now. I don't care. Take Go it ahead. off. Go ahead. Yeah. That's without the. Without okay. Are, are you wide open right now, Rob? No, this is wide open. Which sounds right. I, sounds, I thought that sounded yep. way too gainy before, but you had a, a, a pedal on there. I get it now. That's that, and that sounds right. Yeah. Model sounds get very close. There is a. Just in my opinion, and for to my ear, there is a digital sounding something in the in the breakup mm-hmm. that I've just heard that does before. Not, it just doesn't sound the same, and obviously, it is because it's a digital signal and it's not a tube component, and right? Et cetera. <laughs> There's no power. Now, I, I as somebody who gigs like. Like I said, like several times a week, I'll use this thing. But I, I bring my pedal board, and actually, I'm surprised it takes pedals well. Right. Uh, honestly, to me, uh, you know, the Kemper has its advantages and stuff. Kemper doesn't take pedals, to me, as well as the HX does. And I've used the Kemper maybe, not a ton, maybe five times. Yeah. But um, I have a uh, one of those uh, MXR badass mm-hmm. overdrives, and it's got a circuit. Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't think I've seen that. super modified badass overdrive, and <laughs> that's a mouthful. And it, and it has a bass boost, so when you turn the overdrive on, yeah. it boosts your low end and low mid, because a lot of times you lose that with an overdrive anyway. Sure. And it gives you this thick, creamy. Well, you do overdrive. with a tube screaming overdrive anyway. It's the best sounding overdrive. It's better than the tube screamer. It's better than. And, and this is a personal thing, man. It's a yeah. real specific kind of overdrive. So, yeah, maybe you Something that I didn't yet. think of this time, but that we will definitely do next time, 
is we're going to do a B we're going to do a live a B it would take too much time I don't deal with it we're about to wrap this sucker up um, uh, but as a matter of fact let's do that let's wrap this up next time we'll a B with the live match let's okay see. so you want to do our thing now yeah like you just want to do some playing stuff no I want you to shut up <laughs> so that I can <laughs> cap the episode and then we'll move forward <laughs> These yeah. guys are longtime friends, by the way, if you can't tell. I'm not gonna, really. Also, uh, not to really. any listener being... or viewer, uh, the the AC is not working in here. Yeah, uh, no AC. Welcome sh- to my humble abode. You shouldn't disclose that, man. I, I plan on editing this out. Um, <laughs> so, and we're going to cut back. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to close this out, basically. Okay. So, next time we will AB. But yeah. for now, I'd like to thank my esteemed guest mr tony campanovo line sex product specialist from the yamaha guitar group and just a beast of a guitar player a beast of a player a knowledgeable product specialist and uh a kind human man so tony thanks again um we'll have you back soon and uh, yeah this was a super ton of fun man so we got to do it we got to ab him we're gonna do that. We're gonna make and, it happen. Uh, yeah. You know, you get all you get the rest of your guys through the rotation, and then they'll. I definitely, all come back. I definitely have every intention of re- recurring guests, especially yeah. guys like you who are. I've always got new things. Yeah, about to say you're. You've always got something it's like when new. Jay to talk Leno about. would have the animal guy on every now and then. It's like this week we've got. <laughs> uh, this week we got a rhinoceros. And it baby. feels just like all the other times that we've hung. It's just that we've got headphones on and. You know, and, it's, and it's really sweaty. And it's real yeah. sweaty. It feels like there. we're hanging out in Texas yeah. again. And we're making okay, millions, so though. Tony Campanovo, my dude. Yes, sir. Lennon awesome. McCarty on Guitarty, twisting and tweaking. Yep. Um, Gear and Beer Podcast. Give us a follow. Uh, tell your friends about us. Um, and as the old gray wolf of DFW fame would say, stay hard, keep jamming, and we'll see you. Thank you for listening to the Gear and Beer Podcast. Make sure and subscribe and turn on notifications for our channels. And if you haven't already, follow our Instagram and YouTube channels. We truly appreciate your support and ask that you please tell anyone you know whom you think might be interested in our podcast about Gear and Beer to help us grow and continue bringing in great guests from around the industry and beyond. Thanks again. And until the next episode...